In this video, we're going to complete example four. We're going to use the elimination method to solve the following pair of equations simultaneously. So I'm going to start by writing each equation down, one above the other. So 4x squared plus y squared equals 61. And then below that, x squared plus y squared equals 34. Making sure we line up those x's, y's, the equal signs, and the constant terms here. Now I'm going to subtract these equations. And the reason I'm doing that is because y squared minus y squared gives me zero, which means I can cancel them out here. Next, 4x squared minus x squared will give me 3x squared. Put down the equal sign. And 61 minus 34 will give me 27. So I now have 3x squared is equal to 27. And I start by dividing both terms by 3. This will cancel the 3, leaving me with x squared equals 9. Now I can square root both sides. When I have x squared and I square root it, I go back to x. And the square root of 9 is 3. Now I have to be careful here. There's actually two solutions. x can equal 3 or x can equal negative 3 because either one of these, when I square them, will equal 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 also equals positive 9. Now that I've calculated x, I need to calculate y. So we're going to explore what happens when x is 3. So if x is 3, what are we going to get for y? And we're also looking at what happens when x equals negative 3. Now we have to pick one of the two equations. I always pick the simpler of the two, which I reckon is the second one. So x squared plus y squared equals 34. So if x equals 3 or positive 3, let's substitute that into the equation. We get 3 squared in place of x plus y squared equals 34. Now, 3 squared is 9. So we're going to get 9 plus y squared equals 34. I need to subtract 9 for both sides in order to cancel the 9. This will give me y squared is equal to 25. Now, when I square root both sides, I'm going to get y is equal to 5. It can also equal negative 5. Because if I square negative 5, negative 5 times negative 5 also equals positive 25. All right, let's look at what happens when x is negative 3. And some of you might have noticed that we're going to get the same result here. But we'll go through the working out anyway. If x is negative 3, we have negative 3 squared plus y squared equals 34. Now, negative 3 squared is 9, or positive 9. So 9 plus y squared equals 34. And we are at the same point we were previously. So if I was to continue the same working out, I'm going to get the same result as I got before. I'm going to end up with y squared equals 25. And when I square root both sides, once again, I will get two results for y. y can equal 5 or y can equal negative 5. Now, now what does this mean when I've got two responses for y for each response for x? Well, we've actually got four answers here. What are these four answers? Well, we can have that x equals 3 and y equals 5. We can have that x equals 3 and y equals negative 5. That's two responses so far. We can have that x is equal to negative 3 and y equals 5. Or we can have that x is equal to negative 3 and y is equal to negative 5. Now we need to make this really clear, so we need to write this down in a more clear manner. I'm just going to give myself some room, and we'll write down our four possible responses. So when x is 3, 
So we can have x equal to 3 combined with y equal to 5. So we'll say that x equals 3 and y equals 5. We can also have it where x is 3 and y is equal to negative 5. x is 3, y is negative 5. We can also have it when x is negative 3 combined with y being positive 5. And also when x is negative 3, y can also equal negative 5. These are our four solutions here. Now I need to write or statements down because we are stating that either, so I'll start with either, either x equals 3 and y equals 5, or x equals 3 and y equals negative 5, and so on. Now we're going to highlight these responses to the right, because this is what we want the marker to see. Now I'd like to check these results to see if they substitute correctly into these two equations here. We'll start with the first one, where x is 3 and y is 5. If x is 3, 3 squared is 9, 4 times 9 is 36. y is 5, 5 squared is 25, 36 plus 25 does equal 61. Now, once again, if x is 3, so 3 squared is 9, y is 5, 5 squared is 25, 9 plus 25 does equal 34. So that works for our first response here. Do we really need to check the other three responses? Well, no, because they're actually all the same numbers, 3 and 5. It's just that some are positive and some are negative. But the negative's kind of irrelevant because when I square negative numbers, I get a positive result anyway. So by checking the first response, I've basically checked all four responses at once. Anyway, that concludes our video on example four. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.